Hi guys, I'm a forester here. And you know we tend to categorize people. We put people into categories. For instance, are you an early bird or are you a night owl? Are you an extrovert or an introvert? Are you left-handed or are you right-handed? I'm right-handed. Are you male or female? That one's getting a lot of discussion these days. And I still think we only have two choices, male or female. Well, here's another choice in the topic of this video. Do you use a daily planner or not? People tend to go one way or the other. They either like daily planners or they don't. Well, this video is for those of you that like daily planners. I've used planners my whole career for several reasons. They help keep me organized. They serve as a record of my past and it's entertaining to go back occasionally and reread them. It's a one-stop shop for all kinds of things like contacts, expenses, to-do list, my accomplishments, appointments, notes, and those type of things. And as you get older, a fourth reason is that it serves as a memory aid. That's getting more and more important to me. There are some negatives to using a planner, but I wouldn't say there's anything major. The main negative is having something that you have to carry around all day, every day. Now, after having used many different planners over the course of my career, I can easily identify my top two planners of all, and here they are. First is the Daytimer Two Page Per Day Original, and second is the Hobonichi Teco Cousin. Now, as you can easily see, these are very different planners in size at least, but both are excellent products. I used this Daytimer for 10 to 12 years around the turn of the century, and I really enjoyed it. At some point, I went digital though with my planner. Remember the Dell PDAs? Back, but then I came back to a paper planner, this Hobonichi, two years ago after I got into fountain pens, and I probably won't go back solely to digital planners again. Let's go to the tabletop and take a closer look at my top two planners. Okay, we're at the desktop. On the left is my day timer, and on the right is my Hobonichi Teco Cousin. Both are in nice, presentable leather covers. I will say that the day timer's cover came directly from day timer, whereas this cover on the Hobonichi, I had to order from a separate company. Now I'm going to go over eight differences in these two planners to help you decide if you want which one you want, but I'll try to go over them quickly. So the first difference is in size of the planner. Obviously the day timer is much smaller and easier to carry. However, the day timer is just a one month planner. You can tell it's a lot thinner and there's a one month planner right here. This is for August 2009. So it's a lot lighter, a lot thinner, easier to carry. The Hobonichi, on the other hand, is much thicker. This is a one-year planner, so this planner is for 2022, January through 12. Uh, I don't know if I noticed that, but I have my I'm a Forester name on this when I had it personalized. But this is for one full year. To see the equivalent in the day timer for one full year, the equivalent to the Hobonichi, you have to look inside this box right here, and that's why I have it out. But this has 12 of those planners from January through December. And so this box is really the equivalent of the Hobonichi. I'm going to set it aside so we have a little more room for the rest of the review. Now the second difference in these two planners is the paper, and I, the paper is actually the most important difference to me. This Hobonichi is made of Japanese Tomoe River paper, which excels for fountain pen use. It's extremely thin, which allows this one planner to cover the full year. If it was thicker paper, you couldn't do that. And the fountain pen ink doesn't bleed through or ghost, and I want to do a writing sample for you just to let you see. So this is my Platinum. Thirty-seven seventy-six pen and this has a medium nib and I am bearing down as I write so looking over I see a little bit of ghosting not much I doubt you can well I don't know if you can see it or not but it's not bleeding through so this is a medium nib I want to show you a fine nib which I'll use this Pilot Metropolitan this is in a red ink
and this is in a with a fine nib and I doubt you'll be able to see that hardly at all I can see a little bit of ghosting but not much versus the writing for this planter right here the paper here is much different okay let me write the same with the same two pens this is the platinum thirty seven seventy six and this is with the medium nib and this is the Pilot Metropolitan again and this is a fine nib okay and let's turn the page and see what it looks like there's no uh, feathering so that's good even with the medium nib but you turn it over and you do see bleed through I don't know if that's showing up to you but there is bleed through and ghosting much worse than in the Hobonichi so the third difference in these two planners is one that's related to what I just showed you but I'm into fountain pens and the Hobonichi is definitely better suited for use of fountain pens the day timer is better suited for a ballpoint pen and that's what I used in it when I used the day timer the fourth point is uh, related to the organization of these two planners which is very different this day timer I have it opened up to a typical page but the day timer is much better organized there's a lot of thought put into the different sections for things like expenses down here your appointments your to-do list and your accomplishments for the day there's separate books for other things like uh, advanced planning as well as contacts and other uh, to-do type list or note pages the Hobonichi is much more user defined and so you don't see a lot of sections on the page let me pick it up so you can see it a little closer one thing you will notice is that most of the writing is in Japanese but if I need to read something that's in Japanese I just use Google Translate and I can read it but there's no sections on this page and so it's much more user defined if you're artistic you might use icons symbols or freehand drawings to illustrate your day I'm not artistic and so I tend to create my own sections for each day on the page I actually prefer the day timer on this point for its organization now number five is price and on price both of these products are in the same ballpark somewhere to from forty five to sixty five dollars for a one year planner now the Hobonichi is on the low end of that range at forty five dollars what I paid for this one I've seen the day timer online for a range of prices anywhere from fifty five to sixty five dollars I'll look around a little when I post this video and I'll put a link to both products in the description box below now number six is the carry system and my biggest question about the use of a daily planner was always how am I going to carry it but this is really no different from the issue of carrying many other daily items like a wallet a tablet a laptop and many other things some things fit in your pocket and others don't now this day timer could fit in a suit pocket but it would be fairly large fairly obvious really both of these need to be carried off your body back in the day I carried the day timer in my briefcase now I don't use a briefcase and I carry the Hobonichi in the pocket in a backpack along with my tablet pens flashlight and other gear so it really hasn't been a big issue to me now number seven is storage and these two planners obviously come in a very different size and shape now as I mentioned this box holds one year's worth of planners versus this Hobonichi book which covers a full year I think that the day timer is much more bulky and that's one of the reasons why I quit using it after 10 to 12 years these boxes were just taking up too much space okay finally number eight and that's access to information 
Now since the Hobonichi has a full year's worth of information, usually anything that I need is in this one planner. Early in the year, I continue carrying the previous year's planner in my backpack just in case I need it. However, the day timer only has one month's worth of information and I don't carry this box around with me. So if I happen to need information from a prior month, it may not be available. Uh, this is not a major issue though. So there are the main differences between these two planners. The Hobonichi is clearly my current favorite because that's what I'm using. The best planner for you though will depend on the type of pen you use and how you use a planner. I hope this has been useful to you. I'll put links below to both planners online and y'all take care.